is on next Sunday. Amen. Today's topic is subtopic. I have been rescued by Jesus Christ. That's part one. Part two is next week. I have been rescued by Jesus Christ. Repeat that, repeat that again. Let me say that. All right, then. Let's go to Romans chapter number seven. I'm reading everything from the Amplified today. Roman, not the Amplified classic, just the Amplified. Romans chapter seven, verse number um, 24. Romans seven, verse 24. I expect that we'll have a great time today. Amen. I expect that everyone will hear the word. And I expect that the word will bless you today. Romans chapter 7, verse number 24. Are y'all there? Romans 7, verse 24. If you, if you have it, say amen. amen. Wretched and miserable man that I am. Okay, the word miserable is unhappy. Now he says wretched and miserable. The word miserable means unhappy, depressed, sad, sorrowful, downcast, and dejected. He says wretched man and miserable man that I am. So Paul said, I'm all of this. I am unhappy. I am depressed. I'm sad. I'm sorrowful. I'm downcast. I am dejected. It can be much more. Who will rescue me and set me free from this body of death? This corrupt mortal existence. He says, now, now I, I know I'm all of that. All, all in Romans, he, he came up to this conclusion. I mean, I'm battling all these things. He says, guess what? This is who I am. I am a wretched and miserable man. And he says, now, after I said all this, I need to know who will rescue me. Because I know I can't stay like this. Are you someone in your life where you feel depressed, you feel down, you feel sad, and you're like, okay, I can't stay in this position forever. I can't. I can't be like this forever. Who will rescue me from this body of death, this corrupt mortal existence? Verse 25, thanks be to God for my deliverance through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, on the one hand, what, let me back up. Who rescued him? Thanks be to God. For my deliverance through who? Jesus Christ. I want you to understand my deliverance came from who? It didn't come from no preacher, no prophet, no evangelist, no apostle, no TV, no money. No, it didn't come from none of that. It didn't come from anybody. It only came through Jesus Christ. I want everybody to understand. Jesus get all the glory and get all the honor. It, you don't give glory to no man. All the glory goes to God. So I'm rescued only because of Jesus Christ. You understand it? It's not because of me. It's not because of what I ran. But Jesus Christ came and rescued me from my unhappy, my sorrowful, my depressed, my downcast self. All the pains I'm going through, he has rescued me. Y'all get that? He rescued me. Nobody else. I know you talk to me. Night after night, hours and hours, but you didn't rescue me. Jesus rescued me. He used you, but I give all the glory to him. All right, then. So then it goes on, it says this. On the one hand, I myself with my mind serve the law of God, but on the other, with my flesh, my human nature, my willingness, my sinful capacity, I serve the law of sin. So it's two different things. So now I want to read something to you. So I get it right. Listen to this. We are bad. <laughs> we are bad. God is good. Watch this. We are bad. And God is good. You go, you don't believe me? Isaiah, it started even Isaiah 64. So verse 4 talks about how we are and we filthy rags. It talks about all those things, but guess what? I've been rescued now. But just because I've been rescued don't mean I'm good. They came to ask Jesus, good master. He says, why call me good 
Ain't nobody good but the father. And I, 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 I tell all these parents, oh, my kid is good. I have four kids and ain't none of one of them good. Oh, my little angel, no, they're not angels. I'm telling you right now, they, 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 they are, are, are deceiving you. They're not as good as you think they are. I know they make good grades. They got something in there. They, 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 they got some uh, deceitfulness in them. You know what I'm saying? I see. I see it. No, they're good. I see it. I, I love my girl. My, 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 uh, um, first, I used to talk to Faith all the time. Faith, oh, Faith does all these good things. I said, Faith, girl, I know what you really are. You be lying and stuff. And I, I tell her all the time, why you be lying? And you just doing all these things. She says, she says, I don't know. I say, see, I know you. I, don't, I, all, I know you. You ain't all that. My niece over there, she ain't all that. Everybody said, oh, how good she is. Y'all just don't know. Y'all better watch her. They always say, watch the quiet ones too. Amen. Yeah. Watch them. Better watch them. And so, <laughs> watch who you say is good. You all, I, I'm just being honest with you. Ain't nobody good but the Father. I love y'all. I'm not good. I'm just, I'm just not good. Boy, I, I have some bad behavior, amen. They have some good behavior. And I pray that I always stay in my good behavior. But the only reason I stay in is because of the Holy Spirit Say so you bet not. I want everybody to understand that. You bet not. The enemy always wants you to do something bad. Okay, so now, so we're bad, God's good, and because we're so bad, we can't be with God who's good. Because we're so bad, we can't be with God. Y'all like that? We're bad, God's good, I'm so bad, I can't be with him. And so he says, since they can't be with me, I'm going to send down who? My son, Jesus Christ, who paid the price. Who allowed me now, because of the blood of Jesus, to have a relationship with the Father. Now, he, he still didn't say I was good, but he sees the blood of Christ is over me. Y'all understand that? Because I have accepted the blood of Christ in me, the Father says, I see the blood, so I know you belong. I'm supposed to have a mark on my head. I'm supposed to seal with the Holy Spirit. Now, if you don't have that mark, when the time comes, you will have a mark. It may say 666, or maybe the mark of the Holy Spirit, but there will be a mark. I'm just letting you know. You will be identified one way or another. I, I, I'm telling you, that's what the word says. You will be identified. People would know who you are by the mark that you carry. That's right. See, right now it's hidden, but... Eventually, it will be out there so everybody can see where you stand. So all you fakers and shakers, movers and makers, it will be known that you ain't no good. You jack -lag preachers, you jack -lag apostles, you false prophets. You will know. People will know where you stand. He'll know the sheep and the goats. You will know about that false prophet. You, I, I'm letting you know. I'm letting you know the Bible said it'll be false prophets, false Christ, false apostles. They said that false teachers. And, and, and guess what? You will know. Everybody who's sitting on the back row to the front row, you will know. We will know if you're saved or not. Because you be marked. But, but, but this, at the end of the day, when he comes back, even though you marked, every knee shall bow. And every tongue will confess Jesus Christ. Y'all with me now? Amen. All right then. So let's have a great time today. Now, let's go to verse 25. Thanks be to God for my deliverance through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, on the one hand, I myself with my what? With, with, with my mind. Mind, right? With my mind. That word means divine or human. It means my thoughts, my feelings, and my will. Y'all with me now? My thoughts, my feelings, and my will, my mind, that mind will serve God. My thought, every thought, and my feelings, and my will will be lined up with the Father. So my spirit, little s, will be connected with the big s, the Holy Spirit, and we'll walk as one. Y'all with me? Yeah. So I want to just tell y'all about someone's mind. It's in the Bible. I want everybody to go to Mark chapter 5. I'm going to tell you how your mind will mess you up. Mark chapter number 5. 
Mark 5, still reading from the Amplified. And I know you probably read this before and before, but I'm going to give you a revelation. Mark 5, verse number 2. Y'all there? Yeah. When Jesus got out of the boat, immediately a man from the what? Two. With an unclean spirit met him. And the man lived in the what? Tombs. And no one could bind him anymore, not even with chains. For he had often been bound with shackles for the feet and with chains. And he tore apart the chains and broke the shackles into pieces. And no one was strong enough to subdue the, and tame him night and day. He was constantly screaming and shrinking. Shrinking? Is it shrinking? Oh, shrieking among the tombs and on the mountains and cutting himself with sharp stones. Now, will you read that in verse number three? And the man lived in the, where? Mm -hmm. Verse two, and when Jesus go out, of, I'm sorry, when Jesus got out of the boat, immediately a man from where? Mm -hmm. The word tombs. Y'all know what that word means in the Greek? Huh? Oh, it was a question. <laughs> huh? Some says great. The word tombs in the Greek means remembrance. 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 Y'all with me, young people? The word tomb means remembrance. He lived in where? His remembrance. Everything that someone said about him was in his mind. When he was five years old, they say he was no good, was in his mind. At seven, when they when somebody did something to him, he still lived at, that in his mind. All the things he did um, and what people said, if he got into drugs or if he laid with someone who wasn't supposed to live, all that stuff was where? In his mind. He lived there. Every bit of said he was no good, it was in his mind. He lived in a place of unworthiness. He lived in a place that he's gone crazy. He lived in, a, in his mind depressed. Sorrowful. And lonely. Unfit. Not worthy for people. Nobody wanted to talk to him. All in his which was his remembrance. All he remembered is all those things, how he lived. And you say, man, uh, I, I don't understand how someone can live that way. You're living it right now. You keep playing the tape. Someone they're saying something bad to you. When you see them, it brings back to remembrance what they said. I can't move forward. Why? Well, I'm depressed. Why? Because of what somebody said or what somebody done in my life. Uh, everything and how I live is all the things that happened in my past. And I'm remembering and I cannot get out of this tomb that I've built up. So I live in that tomb. You say, how? A man lives according to how he what? Think it. He lived there. He came out of there. He spoke there. That's still how he lived in a tomb. No one can tame him. Why? He only lived in remembrance. I can tell you how good you are. He don't see it. He can't hear it because all he know is the tomb he lives in. And since he lives in that tomb, he does bad things to himself. And he does bad things to others because that's all he knows. And nobody wants to be around him because he's living in the tomb. He's all made up what's in his mind. But it was reality. But he cannot move forward because of his mind. Paul said, I serve him in my mind. This guy couldn't serve God in his mind. He had the mind full of the enemy. If you keep on reading, when he saw Jesus, he came out. He fell down and worshiped. On one hand, 
On the other hand, he said, who are you? He said, I'm Legion. Still in his mind. We are many. What spirit did he have? But what spirit did he say? Huh? It said right there. Did I read it? Huh? An unclean spirit. Unclean. Unclean spirit is real. The tomb is real. And there's too many people in the house of God who's living in the tomb. Youth, too many of y'all live in the tomb. What a bully said. You, your teacher said how you're not going to be anything. Social media said about you. And you live out what people said about you because you're not implementing Christ. I can omit old wretched man that I am who will save me. Jesus Christ will save me from this death that's in my mind. Why did you say Jesus Christ will rescue me with this death that's in my mind? On my job, talked about me. You're not good. You're not fit for this job. I don't know why you got this job. And it seemed like everybody gets you. And it's all in the tomb. You have to ask the question, who will rescue me? But then you have to ask yourself, do you really want to be rescued? Because when Jesus came on the scene, he fell down. It's something in him that really wanted to, but then he couldn't. He really wanted to, but he couldn't. But when Jesus came and called that spirit out, the Bible said the man was free. He went back to town. It was, it was, they couldn't believe it. I'm telling you right now, you don't have to continue to live that way. You can be rescued by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, then. So then it goes back on to uh, Matthew chapter 5. I want to go to Matthew 5, 48, just so you can understand where we are. I have been rescued by Jesus Christ. Y'all understand it? That's where we are. Um, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse number 48. My mind is my thoughts and my feelings and my will. Now, in Matthew 5 and 48 tells us this important thing. It says, you therefore, are y'all there? Yeah. Will be what? Perfect. Perfect. Growing where? Into spiritual maturity. Let's stop right there. What well, says both in mind and spirit? You will be going, you will be growing where? Into spiritual maturity. Y'all understand that? I want you to write this down. Or, or you remember this? Everybody remember this. Growing spiritual maturity. Watch this. I am not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. Oh, come on. You have to understand. I, look, look, I'm not where I want to be. But I'm not where I, I used to be. Because if you knew how I used to be, <laughs> let me tell you something. See, you may not like me now, but if you know me back in the day, you wouldn't have liked me then. Because I wouldn't have put up with a lot of stuff. Me and you wouldn't have been friends. I wouldn't have hung around you because you wasn't my type. I could have cussed you out and been fine with it. It was easy. Some people say, I could have drank you up on the table. You ain't drinking. You don't know what drinking is. Somebody say, you don't know the drugs that I did. You don't know what it did to me. You don't know how it used to be. Yes, I can admit I'm not where I want to be. But my goodness, I thank God I'm not where I used to be. Why? Because I'm growing spiritually. I'm maturing in who? In Christ. And you have to understand the closer the closer I get to God, the more I focus on him. Oh, don't get it. You, you, I don't think you really understood what I just said. The closer I get to God, the more I focus on him. Do you get that? See, because the more I focus on him, I don't think about 
the things where I'm not and what I can't do, all my focus is on him. See, you know what? I don't have to think about what I used to do. You know why? Because you're reminding me. <laughs> you the one holding me back. God's not holding me back. You holding me back. You seeing the old me and you can't see what? The new me. But I have to be fine with that because you know what? My focus is on not what you say. My focus is on what God says. Does everybody understand that? All right. So it says, you therefore will be perfect. Now, watch what it says. You, therefore, will be perfect. Do y'all read that with me? You, therefore, will be perfect. A question is, is there, is that a suggestion? Is, is, is that just a, a statement? Or is that something that he says, you're going to be? Right? You're going to be perfect. Why? And the King James said, you're going to be perfect because I'm perfect. You will be perfect. Now, the word perfect means complete. It's not perfection like y'all think. It's complete with God. Are you complete with God? Oh, that's good. Completeness. I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior. He's given me the promise. Now I'm being led by the Spirit. Because now I'm led because my spirit is connected with him and now I walk in obedience. You got that? So everything I do now, I yield my will to him. My thoughts and my feelings is all about him now. And it's not about me. I am what? I'm complete in him. <clears throat> complete where? <clears throat> Excuse me. Both in mind <clears throat> and character. In my mind and character, I behave like I belong to Christ. Y'all with me now? It says actively what? Integrating godly values. Now, I like that. Integrating godly values into where? Your daily life. So I want to give you an example of integrating Godly values. Man, how do you integrate godly values? How do you integrate godly values? See, we just say things, but we don't know what it really means. Integrating means I'm blending something. Y'all understand? Integrating is blending. Blending. Integrating means what? Blending. What? How can I integrate? How can I blend godly values into my life? What does that look like? You got it? So I, I have a cup. What do I do with this? This is me. How can I integrate godly values in me? Anybody? Yes, ma'am. By filling himself with the word. That is a true statement. Uh, filling myself with God's word. I have to live according to God's word. Right? I put his word in me. But his word is not a value. Mm. Mm. His word is the way of, that's how I'm supposed to live. I'm talking about a godly value. Anybody know? The fruits of the spirit. That's right. Let's talk about this. The fruit of the spirit, right? What's the first one? Give me some. How, wait, 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 hold, how many fruits of the spirit is? Now, I, I, I tell you this, and, and, and I will. I, I was supposed to go to the bank. I listen to me, y'all. Youth, y'all listen to me. I was going to the bank, and and, and I, I, I will stay true to my word. If y'all answer the questions, every answer I give you five dollars. 
I said youth. 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 Godly values. Where is the fruit of the spirit located? Uh-uh, no. What is it? Huh? Okay, you fell in heaven. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Okay, now, how many fruits of the spirit is it? Youth, please, youth. Youth. Okay, no one, is anybody cheating over here? Who said nine first? You said, okay, no cheating now. No adults tell them. That's one. Somebody told her? Okay, don't count. Y'all, come on now. Y'all, it's you, Sunday. Please don't tell her you. Okay? The, uh, put the phones away. Yes. Give me a fruit of the spirit. Love. Get $5. She, she's taking y'all money. Love. Love is one. Give me a fruit of the spirit. Who said that? Okay, hold on for a second. Let me explain something to y'all. Yeah, hold a cup for me, babe. Maybe y'all not understanding what I'm talking about. Are you about my you about my age, right? Okay, so if you in the fifties, uh, you're not a youth. You took away five dollars, so you don't ever you uh, you split that up and you had to give them that money because you took away the money. So peace is gone. She took y'all money. Okay, here. We got love. One, we have peace. Joy is another one. Faith gets, that's your first one? Five dollars. Joy is one. What's that? Patience is another one. That's five dollars. How much I owe you now? Y'all better keep track of how much I owe you. What's another one? Huh? Kindness. Kindness. Who said you said kindness first? No, only one gets five dollars. Only one. And, and who said kindness first? Wait, who who said who said it first? Who oh, said it first? Okay, kindness is another one. All right, give me another one. <clears throat> Faithfulness. That's another one. Give me another fruit. Self control. She taking your money. How much money have I, 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 okay. Now, it's two more. Gentleness is another one. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Gentleness is another one. We have one left. Brady, you have no money. What's that? Which one am I missing? No, y'all already said faith. There's only one left. It's only generosity, no. It's one more. It's one more. No, you can't say it. You're my age. <laughs> one more. It's the last one, too, in the Bible, in 23. It's all something. What's with these hints? Okay, the person up here does all the stuff, right? Tell me. It's the fruit of the Spirit? Does that even sound right? There's temptation. I'm sorry. What's one? Now, let's go back. I'm going to say this to you. The first one in the Bible, it says love. Right? Love starts off everything. Amen? And I like it when she said the word of God. But without love, you will not receive. You will not receive. Without love, you won't receive the word. Because it just go in and go out. Because the spirit is the only one that can reveal the word to you. So you have to have godly values to understand it. Right? So love is one. And love is the most important one that you have. Right? Out of them all. Okay, now, the second one the Bible said is joy. Hey, hey come on now, what y'all doing? Joy. Somebody said joy. Mm -hmm. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The next one in the Bible says patience. I mean, it says peace. Mm -hmm. Right? Y'all said peace. No, somebody took y'all money and said peace. Right? <laughs> that, we, that we have peace that pass all understanding. Okay, so then, what, what are you doing? Yeah, no, I'm reading. You what you reading? No. <laughs> the next one was patience. Someone said patience meant long suffering. Someone said kindness, which is gentleness. Y'all said that. Um, somebody said goodness. And so y'all said that one. And y'all said faith, which is faithfulness, and y'all said gentleness or is meekness. 
Minister Miller and Minister Parker are going to come back, um, not Sunday, but the next Sunday, and go into depth what the fruit of the Spirit is so you really understand how to integrate this in your life, right? So all this is in me, but we're missing one. Anybody know? Okay, so the youth, you're out. You're, you're out, you're done? Self-control. No, she said self-control. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't hear nobody say self-control. Who said it? I thought they said it. Okay, it's two-faced. Faith Parker. Faith P. Faith P. Parker. said it? Yeah, she said it. I didn't put, if you said it, I didn't, if I didn't put nothing in here for that, then you didn't say it. I like that, didn't it? But they said you said it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so I'm putting it in. Right? Now, that's me. And, but do this, man. So, that's me. Me, I've integrated, integrated. What did I integrate? The fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. Can y'all not give me more than I ask? Oh my goodness! How many? How many fruits is there? How many fruits is there? How many? I can't hear you. Nine. How many faith? How many Braden? It's a ten dollar question. That's okay. Mike is the only one got it right. It's only one. I'm not listening to you because you said it out of turn. It don't count. It's only one fruit. Nine parts. It's one fruit. Read the scripture. Read the scripture. It's one fruit. One fruit. One fruit, nine parts. Right? One fruit, nine parts. Listen to me. What part are you missing? Think, think, think like this. What part are you missing? And this, and this is something very, you have to take the word for what it is. Because without the first word, everything is first. God, I, I want you to understand when you understand the Bible. The first word means something. The Bible goes in threes. Everybody understand that? Give me an example. This is you understand it. See there, somebody give me an example what I'm saying. Y'all said y'all knew it. See, you, <laughs> I said, no, I said the Bible, yeah, it's, the first word means something. It's always in parts. In the scripture, yes, in the scripture. And I said, y'all understand what I'm saying? And y'all said, yes. Okay, y'all understand. Threes, give me something threes. The Father. See, threes. Which one's first? The Father. Then the Son. He said, he said the Son. And then what happened? The Holy Ghost. 30, 60. See? It, it, it's all in threes. Death, burial. Without love, the first part, you can't have any other parts. Without love, you can't have peace. Without love, you can't have joy. You're right. Without, because without love, you don't have God. Amen. Why? Because God is love. I don't want to talk about it because Minister Parker ready to talk about it. So I'll leave it alone. <laughs> Reach. Okay, yes. It's integrated. So guess what, y'all? So. Okay, here it is. I have the cup, which is me. The different pieces of the fruit is in me. But they have to be made, integrated to be made one. Yeah. So in order to integrate it, once they're integrated, you can't separate the strawberries from the berries. Oh, come on. You, <laughs> you can't. Y'all are hard crowd. Youth, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. When you blend all the fruits together, you can't take away parts. 
If I have the fruit of spirit, no matter what I'm going through, I do have peace that passes all understanding, no matter what I'm going through. Huh? The joy of the Lord is my what? Strength. 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 <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. So with the tasting of it, you gave a, a different. Oh, my goodness. Okay, she wants to go when you taste it. You can be, sometimes you can taste the difference of it. So even with. Okay, let's use it for an example. Come on up here. You're talking a lot. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Come on. Come on. Come on. So, on. no. I'm going to explain to y'all. This is one part of my message. I'm, I'm teaching you now. She said that when you drink the smoothie, you can taste different parts. So then when you live your life, I can see some parts that you don't have. No, I said the parts you don't have. You know why? No one talks about what you have. They always talk about what you don't have. You want to talk to. You come on up here too. Come on, join me, my daughter. Let me explain something to you. Yes, you, you, you're talking. See, watch this. Since y'all want to be, be a part of the message, is which one of y'all like joy? Right now, mm -hmm. yes. We all knew that. Well, I did. Which one lacks self-control? Right now. <laughs> you keep saying right now. <laughs> Which one lacks patience? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one lacks kindness? And you lack faith. To believe everything God said. And because you lack the faith, even though you want to go forward, you can't. Because of lack of faith. Because you don't have the mind of faith because your mind is still living in a tomb. You're still living off of yesterday's, last year's, 1999 stuff. You're still living in the tomb. And guess what? You need to be rescued. Guess what? I'll tell you this. A tear doesn't rescue you. Crying does not rescue you. We can see that you feel sad and feel sorrowful for the things that you've done. It will not rescue you. Only one thing will rescue you is what? Faith. And who? Christ. Jesus Christ, I don't want to rescue you. Until you have faith that he can rescue you, you will never be rescued. How long are you going to stay in your situation or when are you going to call upon Jesus? I come home sometimes to my wife. You can tell something happened. How? She ain't kind to me today. She liked the kindness. Oh, I know she loved me. But she's not kind to me right now. I know it. I see it. She'll see it later because a lot of times she come back and say, babe, I'm sorry. But you'll see it. We, we, we sitting down on the couch. We, we, we doing something. And we said we're not going to eat no more. We can see us going on the counter and get some popcorn maybe. Get some skinny popcorn, though. Get some berries and get some fruit. Watch this. Everything is that the one thing we're lacking. Self-control. Self-control. That's, That's a big one, but it's the last one, too. The only thing you're missing is the self-control. See, I want to tell you, every a lot of people in here is missing something. And you have to know what you're missing in order to ask God to help you fix it. Because he's the only one that can rescue you because he desires 
that everything be integrated in you. Why? He said, I want you to be what? Perfect, Perfect in him. And that means complete. Thank you all for my, my, my two lovely young ladies. Give them a hand. Is she showing kindness right now? <laughs> She's on Facebook and she's showing that. <laughs> I told you. Now, you could be loving, but still not be kind. Yes, ma'am. You really want to say that? I would say that I don't like my kids. Okay. Oh? A what? Okay, you ain't answer. You ain't answer that. You ain't. Do you ain't answer that? Let me ask you this. Last week, were you in your prayer closet four times a day? Were you in your prayer closet? So, when was the last time you were in your prayer closet four times a day? Okay. Okay. Let me explain something to you. When. Let me, yeah, let me tell you something about a spark. Tell you about a spark. What well, I'm telling you is in the word of God. And the only way you can move is not a spark, young lady. It's about the faith in Jesus Christ. It's about the faith. I'm going to tell you something. I don't care what no one says. If I don't believe in the word of God, it won't happen for me. The only thing that moves me is his word. The Holy Spirit comes. It moves me. You, I want you to understand. It moves me. To do what? To do what thus says the word of God. To put me in my prayer closet. To put me in reading the word. To put me in position to receive from him. Let me tell you something. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. The Bible says Hebrews 11 and 6. Without Faith. It is impossible to please him. Not a spark. I want everybody to understand this. I want you to get this. Only faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And evidence of things are not seen. Faith. If I don't have faith that God can do it, he won't do it. He's only moved by your faith. Not by your prayer four times a day. I can talk to God and still not have faith. It's a lot of people pray to God and don't believe what they say. I want everybody to say, All, faith only comes by the word of God. Not what you said. You can't go out here and name this and claim this like people tell you. They lying to you. I can't name that they have a million dollar home and my credit score is 500 and I work at McDonald's. But yet I'm running around this house and I'm naming and claiming it does not work. People lying to you. That's what you call a false prophet and false preachers who just want your money. It's truth and it's going on right now. You can run around and call you want to. It's not the word. Did you ever hear Jesus tell Peter, run around the camel and when you get done, the camel's yours? No, I, I, I'm being very serious. I, I want you to really, not just you, just people to understand the truth. The Bible says this. When the end comes, people will have itchy ears. And, it, and, it, and it'll lead them from the truth because it's deceiving themselves. And he says that preachers, false prophets, and, and teachers, and leaders, whatever you want to call them, will sit there and, and tickle your ear. And, 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 and churches grow because they say things that people want to hear. People don't want to hear the truth no more. Let me tell you something. The Bible says the truth will set you free. I want everybody to understand that. And I don't care who you are and what you say. And I don't care what the title is. You can pray and fast all you want to. Without faith, you won't move God. I cried all the time. It didn't move God. 
I could snap there and say, oh God, lay it, lay it, lay it, lay it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But if I did not believe that he could do it for me, he can get me out of this mess. He could take me out of darkness into his marvelous light. You understand that, youth? You will always have a bully until you understand who God said, if he be for you, then no one can be against you. And you have victory in Christ Jesus. Do you understand that? And if you align yourself up with what God wants you to do, you will always prosper. I didn't say it'll be easy, but you'll always prosper. The righteous man falls seven times, but he said this morning, don't give up. Don't you get back up. You continue to fight. Because the Bible says he did not make any armor for the backside. Everything's in the front. Because I'm slowly moving forward. And every time I move forward, guess what the enemy do? He moves backwards. You want the enemy off your territory? Get yourself up. Put the army of God on. Guess what? And the sword of the spirit is the word of God. I attack the enemy with the word of God. And, we and my shield of faith defends me from his. Yes, sir. Just a seed of the mustard seed. And do, do I see that you would be a mighty woman of God? Oh, yes, I see that. And I know that's going to come out. And I know you'll be on your way. But I tell you this. You have too many moments. You have great moments sometimes with God. And I'm going to tell you this. God wants more than a moment. He wants a lifestyle. It's a lot of people have moments. I had them. I had them before I had moments with God. I could never break through. And no one could tell me what was wrong. They tell me, they sing that, go and pray, go and pray, go and pray. No one says, apply the word to your life and believe what it says. That's what it's all about. They always say, what, what's wrong? Oh, I'm just go and pray some more, go and pray some more. What? What, what else you want me to say? I can only talk to him so much. Because guess what? Sometimes they should have told me to shut up and hear what he has to say. So go to your prayer closet and just shut up and hear what he has to say to you. Good morning, Holy Spirit. What do you have to say for me? And guess what? If you don't hear him, go back. Because what he's trying to do is train your ear to hear. Because the word says, my sheep oh, my Lord. and a strange voice he will not listen to. You understand that? Being rescued by him. I'm serving God in the spirit of my mind, my thoughts, my will, and my feelings. Last verse. I want to read you something. Go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Last one. Last one. I love all y'all. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you the truth. I love you that much. I'm going to tell you the truth. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Y'all there? No. Okay. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally. What do you say? Finally. Believers, whatever is what? True. Whatever is honorable and worthy of respect. Whatever is right and confirmed by God's word. What did I just say? Whatever is right and what? Confirmed by God's word. Whatever is what? Pure and wholesome. Yeah. Whatever is lovely and brings what? Peace. Whatever is admirable and a good repute. If there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think continually of these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Finally, this is how I want you to think. Not what the enemy said, but think of these things. Wholesome and pure. The word of God. I want you to think of those things. Why? Because now I am forming my mind to have the mind of Christ in me. We're supposed to have the mind of Christ. I only think of those things that's going to help me, not destroy me. I'm going to think of those things that are lovely, not things of vengeance. You see that? I'm going to think those are peace because I'm, I'm not going to worry about it because I know God got me. So many times we go to bed worried about tomorrow. He said tomorrow can take care of itself. He said you can't add nothing to it. See, the fruit of the spirit is something big. You have to integrate that in your life. 
Does everybody understand what I'm saying? So, he's my rescue. He's the only thing that can rescue me. I love what you said. John chapter 1, verse 1. Y'all know what it says? John 1 and 1. In the beginning was what? And the word and the word was and the word what? The wealth among us. It did. All things are made by the word. And make sure that anything you hear, make sure it's confirmed by the word of God. Amen. The truth will hurt sometimes. I'm sorry. The truth will hurt a lot of the times. The truth is not to shame you. The truth is to protect you. The truth is not to leave you. The truth is let you know that you're not alone. How? In this room, you're not alone. You don't have to fight it by yourself. You got prayer people that will pray with you. If two or three can touch and agree, it can be done. Three cords to a rope is, can't be broken. It's the word. It starts off with one and it ends with the other. How it start off with the Father? In the middle was the Son. It ends with what? The Holy Ghost. We, it, we have to do what? Have the Holy Ghost now. He's there to lead and guide me, the Spirit, to teach me all things, to bring back to remember what he said. He's my rescue. Amen. Anybody have any questions? I had a great time today. Amen. Oh, remember the smoothie. You know what we used to, my wife used to do? She used to drink a smoothie every day. After we worked, a smoothie every day. I want you to understand. I want you to drink your smoothie every morning. Not talking literal. Take on that fruit of the spirit. Integrate that in your life every morning. That's what it says in our daily life. Not a moment, not just on Sundays, but your daily life. And the Bible says, you will prosper and have good success. So, I feel that I have muscles on my teeth now. I feel like I can do anything through Christ Jesus. I feel that I'm more than a conqueror. Come on, do you feel that? I feel that I am more than a conqueror. I feel like I have victory in Christ Jesus. I'm feeling this. It's all in my will. I'm feeling this. It's in me now. I feel that he has purpose. That's my will. I feel. I'm going to continue to preach his uncompromising word. Why? That's his will for my life. To teach leaders. To teach the truth. To expand the kingdom. To teach the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Ah. Uh, and my thoughts are all about him. I give him praise and give him glory. I don't look at the enemy because I look at him. I don't see him. David never seen the lie. He seen God. I come with you in the name of Jesus. Woo! You see? Man, I have muscles on my teeth now. Why? I am a peculiar person. I'm a king and I'm a priest. I feel like I'm highly favored in the Lord. Yeah. I feel that I can accomplish everything he wants me to accomplish. Yeah. And I feel no matter what I'm going through, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. So, doesn't matter what's going on in my life. I have peace to know that God got me work right in the palm of his head. Woo! And I give him praise for that. Give God a hand praise. Thank you everybody who's joining on Facebook. And if you haven't, if you don't know Jesus, you contact us and we can help you to know who he is. So he can be a part of your life. And we'll see you all next week. Amen. The doors.